Welcome to Review Every Vehicle by CitizenCon 2024. The point is to give an update on every vehicle since some haven't had a video made about them in years and others, the information is simply too spread out to be helpful in making decisions. Remember, digital vehicles aren't imaginary, digital vehicles are imagine necessary. Every month we do a giveaway to give back to this wonderful community. This month's giveaway prize is going to be either an Anvil Terrapin or if we hit 6,500 human subscribers before CitizenCon, I will give away an Anvil Carrick. So make sure you share the channel and tell your org mates to come and check us out because we are getting close. To enter the contest, make sure you're subscribed to Billionaire Ninjas, leave a comment on at least one video, and like or dislike at least one video. Winners have two weeks to claim their prize. Members collectively have a 25% chance of winning just for being members. So if you're subscribed, consider hitting that join button. And if you're not subscribed, I appreciate you hitting that subscribe button. For the full giveaway details, make sure you visit our Billionaire Ninjas Discord or our social media at Ninjas Leap. And don't forget, we stream three times a week and we also give out prizes on our streams. Today, we begin our trip through the Tumbrel manufacturer. And the next vehicles are the Tumbrel Cyclone and it's five variants. We have the Cyclone Base, $50 standalone, 50 war bond was 50 at concept, costing game is 130K. The RC, 65 standalone, 65 war bond was 65 at concept, costing game is 130K. The RN, $65 standalone, 65 $5 war bond with 65 at concept cost in game is 130k the tr $65 standalone 65 war bond and 65 at concept cost in game is 130k the mt $70 standalone $70 war bond with 70 at concept cost in game is 150k the aa $80 standalone 80 war bond was 80 at concept cost in game is 160k all the Cyclone series are time limited for real world purchase, except for the base Cyclone, which is always available. Only the Cyclone is available to rent in game as well at 5,700 credits for three days. Let me start by saying I'm not the biggest fan of purchasing vehicles outside the game, with only a few exceptions. So almost always I'm going to suggest buying these in game because they are so cheap but I'm guessing in the future that will change and I want these videos to still serve a purpose for people who don't think the same as I do. So I'll rate this as though they do have value as far as spending money. With a potent combination of speed, maneuverability, and rugged durability, the Cyclone is a perfect choice for local deliveries and transport between planet side homesteads and outposts. For those who like to push the limits of speed, the Cyclone RC features a modified intake system to allow for controlled bursts of speed as well as tools to customize handling. Stay mobile and aware with the Cyclone RN. This light reconnaissance vehicle is the perfect solution for scouting runs, providing fast and detailed scans of terrain as well as beacon placement. Designed for militia and security use, the Cyclone TR module features upgraded armor and a single human-operated turret capable of mounting a size 1 weapon and a responsive 360 degree field of fire. Following the success of the initial release of the Cyclone, Tumbrel has taken your feedback and expanded their popular line of tactical vehicles with all new Cyclone MT. Outfitted with a combination gun and missile turret, this module offers increased combat options in the field. A battlefield equalizer, the Cyclone AA comes equipped with surface to air missiles and countermeasure package to provide cover for ground troops against airborne targets. The Tumbrel Cyclone RC, RN, TR, MT, and AA. Huh? I'm just, you know, I'm just asking you. Know, I said it like four times. So why didn't you say it the first time I said AA, Ron? Because it's pronounced Aaron. Son of a! <laughs> you done messed up, AA, Ron. For measurements, the Cyclone are all about the same length, 6 meters, beam 4 meters, height 2.5 meters, with the exception for those with guns and misses loaded on the top, those are slightly taller at 3 meters. If I rank vehicles from small to medium to large to extra large, I would consider this a medium vehicle. For crew, the Cyclone series all have the same minimum crew, which is 1 and maximum crew of 2, except for the TR and the MT, which can fit a third person as a gunner. For SCU, the base can carry 1 SCU, the rest of the Cyclone carry zero SCU. The base has 2,430 micro SCU of stowage and the rest of the Cyclone carries 1820. The claim time for all these vehicles is about two minutes. The expedited claim time is about less than one minute and the fee for expediting the claim time is about 800 credits. For top SCM speed, the base is 35 meters per second, the RC is 38, the RN is 35, the TR is 32, the MT is 30 and the AA is 31. For weapons, the base, the RC, and the RN have no weapons. The TR comes stock with one size one 
gunner-controlled Yellow Jacket ballistic Gatling turret and no missiles. The AA comes stock with two size 2 electromagnetic missiles and a size 1 EMP. The MT comes stock with one size 1 gunner-controlled 9 series longsword ballistic Gatling turret and two size 2 electromagnetic missiles. For hull HP, all of the Cyclone have the same, 6901. For shields, the Cyclone series all come stock with one pin civilian grade C bubble type shield with 750 total HP and recovering 126 HP per second. For vehicle parts, the Cyclone all have the same parts. They all have one extra small radar, one extra small computer, one extra small power plant, one extra small cooler, one extra small shield generator, and one extra small fuel tank. Some special features and amenities for these vehicles are, the Cyclone comes with jump jets to slow falls from high jumps, weapons racks on the side of each seat, the base has storage on the back, the RN has a scanner and small beacons to mark the ground, the TR has a swappable turret, the MT has both a gunner controlled swappable turret and gunner controlled missiles, and the AA has driver controlled missiles. My preferred loadout is to keep the stock loadout on each of these, except for the gun which should be the same on each. You know me, swap it out with scatter guns. A quick shout out to my members, my first ninjas, Star Touch and Rob, my Hokage, Old Weeb, my Joni Ninjas, Radium TX, Paling Tan, The Solid Exodus, Damon Danielson, Dark Wolf God, ETL and Spades, Sean Phillips and Rage One, then my Chunin Ninjas. Raygun 972, Walk on Your Side, Scorpio King 3, Soul Galaxia, Meat Salad, Praetorian, J Solis, Water Fox Studios, San Chimera, Rotten Treats, BMC, and Bears Junkie. Of course, thank you to all my other members from every level who are all listed at the end of the video. As always, membership is never required, but always appreciated. You help make this YouTube dream even more possible. So thank all of you and a special thanks to my gifted subscribers. Now it's time to rate these vehicles. A rating I rate from 1 to 10. My 1 is only by if you have a unique reason as specific to you or because you like the looks of the vehicles. My 10 is if you have the money these vehicles are almost guaranteed to be useful to you in the game. A 1 doesn't mean the vehicles are useless or ugly and a 10 doesn't mean that the vehicles are perfect. Just remember, these are just our ratings. Please give us yours in the comments below. I actually thought I was almost done, I almost forgot about the storm, but uh, we got this, still. My rating for this vehicle is of course going to be handed out based on which variant we're looking at. The base is a seven. The RC is a six. The RN is a seven. The TR is a six. The AA is a seven. And the MT is an eight. Let's start with what I like about all these vehicles. Well, even without the specific features, the Tumbrel Cyclone is one of the best vehicles the game has. I have it at fifth best vehicle in the entire game. It has so many variants, it's hard to not find a version you like. That really is the superpower of the Cyclone. There's a variant for everyone. The second power is that this thing can take an absolute beating. It flips over, it falls off small cliffs, it rolls down hills, and this thing just keeps going. Just don't get shot at because that beating has to be from the world around you, not weapons. It's the easiest vehicle in the game to drive and requires very little skill to master. Being able to bring a passenger is great, but having that extra utility is better. The base is great because it can carry that one SEU of cargo, which is great for when the 1 8th SEU containers just don't cut it. The RC is good because it's crazy fast for a wheeled vehicle. The RN is cool because it has some unique scanning and beacon deployment features that just don't exist in any other wheeled vehicle in the game. The TR is great because it has a third place for a second passenger. The AA is great because you can control the missiles as the driver. The MT is the best of the bunch because it has the best of the TR and AA and is somehow cheaper than the AA. Well, except the gunner takes control of the missiles, but who doesn't want both anti-air and anti-personnel in one vehicle? So, the issues with all these vehicles and how I would fix them. Well, the base is good as it is. It's not really bad at anything. It doesn't need any changes. It's just a seven. And I think that is what it was always meant to be. The RC gets beaten by the STV, which is a weird balancing move on behalf of CIG. Perhaps a racing variant of the STV beating the RC version of the Cyclone would make more sense, but the standard STV beating it feels a little off. But then again, the RC is the better off-road vehicle of the two and most of Star Citizen is off-road. So perhaps that was the counterbalance. The RN is unique in the fact that it can drop those beacons. I just don't know why I would be doing recon in a vehicle without any stealth parts. 
where there are stealth snubs that can do it better and remain undetected. But the stealth snubs don't have beacons, at least not yet. The TR would be great, but the MT exists and is better in nearly every way. The best thing this has going for it is it kind of looks like the Warthog from Halo. The AA would be great, but the MT exists. But what saves it is having the EMP, and that's what doesn't save the TR. The MT quite literally steps on both the TR and the AA. I'm not even quite sure why those exist. However, the AA does have the EMP. The MT is also very tall, and it doesn't fit in the same ships as the non-weaponized Cyclones. That brings me to why these vehicles are scored as they are. The base, like I said, is kind of just, well, it is what it is. It has decent everything, it doesn't need anything or lack anything, it's just right where it should be. And I don't often say that about ships, but hey, CIG nailed this one. The base Cyclone is exactly where it should be, on every dimension. The thing is, not everyone can fit one of these in their ship, so it's limited to those that can take one with them. And the RC would be scored higher, but it's too slow. There's no reason to get it over the STV, really. The RN was a surprise to me. I never knew it had the beacons, but what else I didn't know is how much we are lacking in ground vehicles that are geared towards recon work, specifically. As far as I know, this is the only recon vehicle that is purposed for recon. And you know how I feel about vehicles that are capable of unique things. The TR simply has no place in Star Citizen. I gave it a six because it does have a purpose on its own, but pretty much nobody should buy this because the MT is better in every way from what I can see, except maybe a little bit slower. The AA would have the same problems as the TR if it wasn't for the EMP. That's its saving grace. Well, that and the front seat having control of the missiles. The MT is an excellent vehicle. It checks all the boxes, except it's too friggin' tall. So it fails to fit in certain ships that the other variants can fit in. And that is frustrating. It also loses speed to be so heavily armed, which does make sense for balance reason, but man, a few inches too high for greatness. Well, the Cyclone is for everyone who can fit one in their ship. The RC is for people who want a more off-road vehicle than the STV can deliver, but still want speed. The RN is for people who want a purpose-built recon vehicle because, hey, it's the only one. And the TR is certainly a variant that exists. The AA is for people who need an EMP in their ship, and the MT is for everyone who can fit one on their ship. I imagine using the Cyclone base as my cheap point A to point B vehicle in safe areas. The RC for the same reason, except for places where I don't need to take cargo. The RN to scope out places that have anti-air. The TR as a stationary turret on an outpost or base. The AA as a stationary anti-aircraft vehicle for a tiny base. And the MT for all of those things in one. I know you're here for our rating, but if you really want a vehicle, go buy it. We won't stop you. Or even better, all vehicles can be earned in game once the game is released, and some you can purchase in game right now. These are just our ratings, but when you spend, it's your money. My opinion, the MT almost made my list of ships that are worth buying outside the game. I have a list of three, and this one is definitely number four. And I say almost, but before I can say it's worth it, I need to see what the G12 variants can do and where it can fit in the future, because that might be the better buy if they shrink it like they should. But let's just say I have no notes for you if you bought it, but it's still an earning game for me. All right, that is it for this one. Shout out to the members. Thanks for spending your time with us. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.